Hi guys, it's been a while since my last video. I noticed you've been quite a few in the meantime to join this channel, so welcome everyone. Got a lot of plans for 2020 and I'm actively working on my short film, tutorials, tools, more crystal, well, I'll tell you more later about that. The main reason of this video is that I saw a question that kept popping in my feed, which was how do you get procedural texture like a noise or a triplanar to follow an animated object? Which is a good question if you want to render properly the tutorial scene about surreal architecture I made a while ago. So that's all great. Let's see how we can do that. And at the same time, I'll do a little reminder of what a triplanar is. Let's dive in. All right, let's start by creating a shader ball. So for this tutorial, we're gonna use Redshift. Would work the same with uh, Mantra though. So let's create a Redshift network and a Redshift material inside that we connect to the surface input. All right, let's um, create a RS noise. So I'm connecting that into the diffuse color and I'm gonna add a light into the scene. Oh. That's, oh, that's nuclear explosion. Let's disable the background and reduce a bit the intensity of that dome. Right, um, let's adapt the camera a little bit. That's looking better. So on the shader ball, let's apply the shader we just created and dive inside. So on the Aris noise, I like to tweak the minimum and max value to bring more contrast. And while I'm gonna get rid of the reflection. It's just easier to visualize. So frequency scale is always useful to bring a bit uh, more uh, details into the into the noise. You can always adjust the mean and maximum value as we go and change the overall scale too. Okay, let's say we are happy with that. Let's go back to the geometry and apply a translate. Now, what's interesting is that as soon as we keep uh, changing the position of the object, the noise being a 3D procedural isn't following the object. So we'll go back to that later. Let's, so let's create a triplanar. So we will also use a texture, but for now let's just connect this node to the diffuse and uncheck same image on each axis. Okay, what's going on is that we got a projection of a red texture in X green in Y and blue in Z. So let's just replace it with our texture and connect that to every input, every input. Even though we are not using UVs, it seems like the texture is properly applying to the object. But as soon as we change the position of this guy, the texture is not following either. Okay, we're gonna fix that. Let's drop a null after the geometry that we're gonna call output position, for something like that. And let's drop a rest node. We're connecting the first input to the transform, the animation, and the second to the static object. So we got a few attributes with um, this geometry. I'm gonna first clean all of these. Uh, okay, so now we just got the P attribute and the rest attribute. So what's going on with this node? It's been creating a vector attribute called rest, which is based on the position of the static geometry. So if we compare the position of the static geometry, we realize that it's exactly the same values in between those points. Let's move a bit this object, see if it works. What a disappointment, it's not working yet. Why? It's because Inside the trade planner node, there is a little settings to take in account, which is pressure projection space type, which has to be referenced to actually call the rest attribute in, instead of the position. So now if we move it, it's following everything properly. Same goes for the noise. Well, we don't need to change anything. If it's uh, set to object space, the texture is now following the object properly. Same with the rotation, that's great. All right, guys, I hope it's a bit more clear now. I will release a more advanced tutorial about shading in Redshift very soon using the Surreal Architecture scene. Like I said, 
I have a bit less time this year because I'm really trying to focus on my sci-fi short film I'm making with my brother and I've got really a lot of work, like a lot of work, right? One way to help us is actually to have a look at my art station projects. And if I can interest you into a photo video pack, the small earnings are fully invested into the project for the alien makeups, props, design and whatnot. Don't hesitate to ask me more questions, I'll be happy to help. See you guys very soon.